On Fresh TV, five star service. Tony plays personal chef. Hey, let's get cracking in the kitchen. Rianne's got a modern take on the classic scone. Now these can be made in just 20 minutes. And look who's muscling in on Rick's kitchen. Much better than Dad's steak sambo. G'day, welcome to Fresh TV. Thanks for joining us. So, you're off to the southwest today? Yeah, this time I'm going to jump on a bike and do some touring around the Cary Forest that way. Nice, nice. I'm actually going to cook with some local beef farm from the region today too. Mm. So how do you like your beef? Medium rare. Perfect. On your bike. Okay, happy cooking. See you soon. Stay with us. So you remember at the start of the series, Rick Hart from Winning Appliances had myself at his place and he cooked for me for dinner. Well. It's time to repay the favour. He's asked me to go to friends of his, Brian and Claire, and cook for them. So let's go meet the guys. Claire. Hi, Tony. How are you? Come you on in. Rick. Yeah, you Rick. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Fantastic. You want to show me the kitchen? Come through. Right. So Claire, you're great friends with Rick Hart. He must have had some sort of influence in the kitchen. He certainly did. Uh, when we decided to do the kitchen renovation, we went to see Rick and he pointed me in the direction of all the ASCO products, which nice. I love. Yeah. Ended up with the steam oven, combi steam, combi microwave, and I love the dishwasher so much I bought two of them. Nice, I like me here too. <laughs> That's going to make my job at the end of the night a lot easier, thank you very much. So, how many people are we cooking for tonight? Uh, just about six. Six? Okay, great. Cool. Mm -hmm. that's, that's easy. Time? No, oh, about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes? Yeah. To the here? Yeah. Right, okay, let's get cracking in the kitchen. You might have to give me a hand with the peel up. I still will. <laughs> right. So here we go, we've got this lovely little West Australian beef fillet. So I'm just gonna, I've cleaned it up, and then I'm gonna slice it down the side, and I'm gonna stuff it with some English spinach, a little bit of Persian feta. Persian feta is just like this beautiful, soft, melt in your mouth sort of feta. So that'll just go gooey and beautiful through the middle of that. We're gonna do some potatoes, a little bit of West Australian asparagus, nice and simple. We'll finish off with a little stock as well. Hey, how are you, Tony? Come on in. How are you, Carl? How are you, Carl? Come on through. I'm running a bit late. I'm cooking for you guys tonight. That's yes, all right. Come okay. on through. So, Carmen, I believe you had a lot of input in the kitchen here. Yes. It's a bit different from what it used to be. I saw the previous photos. Yes, and that I was an alfresco kitchen yeah. outside. So, yeah. Yeah. It looks stunning. I love what you've done here with, like, I don't know, I call it a butler's pantry. Would that be the right terminology? Or? Yeah, butler's or scullery is what people yeah, tend scullery, to use. Yeah, scullery, yeah. yeah. You tend to use. But it's got the laundry in it as well, because the laundry used to be yeah, under the stairs. So as you can see, we've got a lovely little seal on each side of the meat. So we'll keep that cut side up, so it keeps all the nice feta inside there and all the juice. And... I tell you, I keep licking my fingers. It's so tasty. Let's stick that in the oven and finish it off. Well, Rick, I think we're even, buddy. Dinner's done. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next season. Have you ever wondered how all this fresh food makes it to your local IGA supermarket? Well, it starts here with the growers, then goes to the Perth markets where guys like Tim have to get up very early and head off to do the buying. Once there, it's his job to check out who has the freshest and best quality fruit and veg. Now the way this works is I go to a half a dozen floors looking for the perfect apple and I find out which one has the, the ripest, the blushest pink ladies and the best price. It's put together on a bay and from there it's in the shop the very same day. And today there's a bit of fanfare. This happens every year when cherries come into season. Come down here, the cherry auctions just happened. It's a great crowd, it's a great atmosphere, raises a lot of money for BMH. Back at the IGA store, the fresh food is delivered and placed, ready for you to take home and enjoy. Look, I think it's important more so for the state. The more we use of the WA, the more the farmers survive, and it's only the IGA stores that are left to help the farmers and WA survive. This is the Mount Lawley store. It's owned and operated by James Kelly. It's grown so close to here as well, oh. so it's only a couple of suburbs away in Wanneroo. 
So next time you're in store, spare a thought for Tim and his team who are all working to make sure you can enjoy the best of the fresh. After the break, what's happening on Rotto? Tony's got the scoop. And a high risk, high reward adventure down south. Oh, careful, careful, careful. The Margaret River region is a great place to spend a bit of time exploring. And if you're prepared to leave the comfort of your car, it's even better. So as nice as this one is to drive, today I'm trading her in for a two-wheeler. <laughs> Rob Ustam runs Dirty Detours Mountain Bike Adventures, taking tourists right into the heart of Margaret River's beautiful natural environment for a perspective you can only get on a bike. You can see, feel, smell the region. Much nicer way to see what's around the area as well. You know that saying, do something you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life? Absolutely love it, yeah. We've travelled around the world mountain biking and come to Margs and started out just wanting to get all the people out and riding in the area. It's a beautiful region to be riding. All right, Rob, where are we heading to today? So we're heading out to Compartment 10. There's some new trails out there through some beautiful carry forest into natural bush. Got some really new single track that's awesome to ride. So. Should we head on out and okay, do it? Okay, you sure you don't have a set of training wheels that I can put on it? No, we'll be fine. Let's okay, do it. Okay, let's go. Oh, careful, careful, careful. If you're like me and not that great on a bike, don't worry. Rob's tours cater to all levels of ability. We can take someone from absolute beginner to confident out on the trails pretty quickly. Oh, it's, it's hard, there's a lot to remember. It's fun, but it's it's really hard. Yeah, um, lots, of, lots of things to remember, but a couple of good tips for you. Pedals level, bum up off the seat whenever you're going downhill. Only really sit down when you're going uphill. And the most important one is looking ahead to where you want to go. Always look positive, so look at through the gaps, look around the corners to where you want to go. Always looking positive. And your body will follow? Absolutely. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> so, ready or not, on to the next challenge. So we're gonna try a little trail here called Pugsley. It's a bit of a downhill run. It's an intermediate trail. Let's give it a crack. All right, let's go. go for it. <laughs> Well, not only did I survive my mountain biking adventure, I loved it. Now for some R&R. &R. After you've been roughing it in the bush for a couple of hours, this is a little bit of luxury. As part of their sip and cycle tour, Dirty Detours stops off here at Margaret River's Watershed Premium Wines for lunch. So as a chef, you're very, very lucky. Um, here, sort of everything is on your doorstep. Watershed's head chef, Dan Gedge, trained under Rick Stein. It was a great experience. I think it sort of gave me the foundation of everything I do now. Rick's a firm believer in, uh, obviously, seafood and fish, but also fantastic ingredients. Dan's creations are something special. Unique, carefully composed medleys of flavours and textures that you won't find anywhere else in the world. So here we have uh, Bustleton, Chargrill Bustleton octopus with some chorizo, um, an almond cream. Mm, yum. Here we have uh, kingfish, uh, which has been very, very gently poached and then torched with mm. um, sort of like a mirin glaze. Mm. Mm, it's like an explosion. And then asparagus with egg yolk, uh, cheese curd, and a pea puree. Dan, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Excellent. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, hi Miles, how are you going? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. All smiles today. You betcha. Yeah. Hey listen, I want to do a, uh, a roasted beef fillet and I want to make a rub with, with some garlic, some horseradish, some whole grain mustard. Can you point me in the right direction? Oh, you're making my mouth water. <laughs> the meat is over in this section, mm -hmm. over here, and then we have the condiments in aisle number five. And I was thinking while you're um, at it, you might like to add some blue potatoes. Some of the blue potatoes. blue potatoes? Blue potatoes just come in. See, this them. is where long arms come to the fore. Lucky you. There you go. Thanks for that. Thank you, Miles. Have a great day. You too. 
we got our staff which is um, local here and which put, which gives us um, really good service to our local community. And people keep coming back because of this fresh fruit, fresh quality. Oh, I told you how much I'm loving Rotto. Seriously, it's been great fun spending so much time here over the series. And it seems I'm not the only one. We all know it's a great holiday destination, but you might not know that it's becoming hugely popular for events. Such a beautiful location, such an iconic location for events in Western Australia. And it's pretty popular for weddings. And is it any wonder, how beautiful is this? We're here at Rottnest because, well, let's face it, it's actually the greatest place in the world. I love seeing the brides coming across with their families and friends on Friday. Everyone's here till Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and it's really just a great place where everyone can not only celebrate the big day with the couple, but also celebrate just enjoying each other's company and really getting together with friends and family. But Rottnest is not only great for an amazing wedding, We've got the Channel Swim, very iconic event for the island, and also the Port to Pub Swim coming up in March as well. So lots of excitement, and then of course our annual triathlon and race around Rottnest events also coming up. Seriously, how good is it? So if you're thinking events, talk to the team at Rottnest Island Authority. Coming up on Fresh TV, Mark Cometti's takedown in the kitchen. We've got some hoisin sauce. Rose and raspberry jam and the cream scones to top off your next high tea. This segment of Fresh TV is brought to you by WA Clean Skin Cellars. Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you a fresh and modern take on the classic scone. Now these quick and easy cream scones can be made from start to finish in just 20 minutes. So to kick things off, self-raising flour goes in. The rest of our dry ingredients involve a tablespoon of sugar, a little bit of extra baking powder for nice lift, a pinch of salt to enhance flavour, thickened cream to make these easier to pull together, and chilled water. Now the trick with a sticky mixture like this one is to bring the dough together with a butter knife so it just cuts right the way through and that way you're not activating the gluten in the flour which can make the scones tough a little bit later on. So we've just brought our mixture together, all we need to do now is get it out onto the bench. This is one of the stickiest doughs you'll ever work with as a cook, so you'll definitely need plenty of flour on the bench. Go high up and that way it spreads it out without getting too many clumps in the actual dough later on. And then from here it's out with our lovely dough. Straight out and over the top. And the most important thing is to try and keep this from getting all over you. So flour on the top. We're just gonna gently guide the dough together. We don't want to get the gluten working in the flour as we said. And this is the key to getting those crumbly scones as opposed to those chewy tough scones. Gently, gently, gently. That is all you need, believe it or not. So we're just gonna pat it out. We want a little bit of height here, probably about two and a half centimetres. Now to cut the dough, obviously the best thing is a cookie cutter, nice and sharp, but this dough is still sticky on the inside, so you want flour on this little mould just to stack things in your favour a little bit. So out, and then just pushing the dough through gently, perfect, out onto our tray. So one of the most important tips with this is remember to reload the cutter with flour in between, otherwise you're going to be covered in dough. And the last one, that's the chef serve. Straight onto the tray. My quick tip for cooking the scones, put the oven to as high as it can go. From there, once they're in the oven, then we can switch it down to 220 degrees. Today's Fresh TV Kitchen is found in a Peter Stannard home. And for more inspirational homes with amazing kitchens, go to stannardgroup.com.au. So to make the rub, just add a tablespoon of whole grain mustard, some of this awesome garlic. This is the best bit. So soft, so pungent. As soon as it leaves the skin, I can smell it. So it says a teaspoon. Olive oil. Just mix that together. That's pretty much it for the rub. Add some salt and pepper as well with these blue potatoes. Try and slice them really thinly, it's hard, they might break. But try and keep them in one piece. All right, so it's time to get your hands messy. Best bit, it's 
grab the beef cheek, sticky mustard, just get down and dirty. And here we have it, we have the beef cheek, coated, with mustard, garlic, and a bit of olive oil. Let's cook it. On to modernising classic jam and cream, starting with our classic raspberry jam. Use good quality jam to start with, and that way you know that it's actually going to taste nice when you get it on the scones. Frozen raspberries, and then the secret ingredient, rose water. On with about a teaspoon. All right, so from here, all we need to do is mix this together, and we've made not just raspberry jam, but rose and raspberry jam. So we're going to freshen up classic whipped cream with a little bit of orange and vanilla bean. So cream goes in onto a little bit of orange zest, probably about half a teaspoon's worth, an eighth of a teaspoon of Equigold vanilla bean paste from IGA. And now all we need to do is whisk it together with a little bit of sugar just to taste. So in this case I'm going for about two teaspoons worth, we've got plenty of sugar in our jam. So we want this as thick as we can get it without turning it into clotted cream, and that is just perfect. Now this is the bit we know, cut your scones in half and then dollop generously with plenty of cream, followed by our jam. So there we have it, my take on 20 minutes of fresh and modern scones. Well, Mark, welcome to yeah, Winning right. Kitchen. Lovely to see you. Oh, so it's great to be here. Yeah, and uh, you're going to cook us up something really special today, I'm told. Yeah, I've got a, got a little stir fry for you, Rick. Beef stir fry, uh, lots of uh, veggies and yeah, all the healthy foods in at the same time. So I'm big on protein, obviously. Yeah. Nice lean meat sauce. And then we've got some bok choy, some capsicums, onions, ho hoisin sauce, soy sauce, zucchini. And we're going to put it all in there, so you're going to get all your veggies too. So it's a great, great way to Beautiful. go. Beautiful. I can hardly wait for that. Awesome. Now you've just come back to Perth from a successful career in professional wrestling in yep. America. Yep. So tell us a bit about that. Uh, it was definitely an experience. I've uh, been over there sort of for the past on and on for the past six years. Yep. Yep. Um, so it enabled me to sort of see the world of wrestling that I grew up watching. So it was just uh, sort of a very wacky world, but it was yeah. definitely a good experience. Something different. People like Dwayne Johnson and those sort of people, you, you, you've obviously had a close association with, with some of them. Yeah, 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 I had the pleasure of meeting The Rock a couple of times and things like that. I was actually trained by his uncle, Arthur. Yeah. Um, so I was around his mum a lot, The Rock's mum a lot, actually, when I was over there. So that was a good experience. Um, but I had some brief encounters with, with Dwayne himself. Um, Great guy, really down to earth for sort of the level of fame that he's reached. And he yeah, was a big yeah. inspiration when I was growing up, sort of to get into business. So Absolutely, it was uh, yeah. funny yeah. how things go full circle and then you're sort of hanging yeah. out with those that you uh, were admiring as a child, you know? Uh, first thing I like to do is uh, add some uh, garlic and onion. What we've got here is some nice lean uh, beef. We've got some hoisin sauce, got some soy sauce. Uh, and then we've got some Chinese rice wine. To add that too. Yeah. Okay, so once we've had that cooking for a while, Rick, what we're going to do is first do a bit of spring onion because that needs a little bit of while to heat up with it too. That'll put some flavour in there. All right, now we're going to start adding some of the veggies. Okay, so you can you can slice these up a bit finer if you wanted to. I like it a bit chunky, mate. Sometimes you know. And then finally the bok choy with that. And then put along a bit. Yeah. Who's the presentation, mate? It's, um, it's not always the best. Easy, Rick. I'm still making my plate, mate. You know? Oh, sorry. Mate. I didn't want to hurry you there. <laughs> well, Mark, thank you very much for coming in. It's been fantastic to have you here. Thanks so much for having me, Rick. Good to have a chat and uh, good to see your expertise behind the saucepan there. And uh, <laughs> yes. uh, looking forward to digging into that. Great, mate. No doubt you uh, think it's much better than Dad's steak sambo. Well, look, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a diplomat, so I'd have to say that probably at this stage it's a bit of a dead heat, but uh, we'll see how we get. Very, very diplomatic, Rick. Very diplomatic. <laughs> but uh, thank you, mate. Thanks, it's mate. Been fantastic. Appreciate it. Good luck. Great. Eating out this week? Stay tuned. Fresh TV's got you covered.
In your fresh lift out this week, a Southern Forest special. Meet the people behind one of WA's biggest food bowls. Grab your copy in the Today section of the West Australian this Thursday. Eating out this week? We've got all the tips you need. Head to Mount Lawley for the taste of the exotic at Mashawi Moroccan and Middle Eastern restaurant. For Asian food south of the river, 1010 House in Karawara offers a great fusion of Malaysian and Chinese dishes. The perfect spot for a Sunday breakfast or lunch, Two Cafe in Darlington is a favourite with locals. Enjoy the stunning views through floor to ceiling glass windows at the Red Manor Waterfront restaurant in Mandra. When it's authentic Italian cuisine you're after, you can't go past a small, family-run restaurant in Bunbury. That's Nicola's on Victoria Street. And further down south, Aravina Estate in Margaret River isn't just a restaurant, it's an experience for the whole family. And there are picks for the week. Enjoy. OK, we've got a roasted beef fillet. And it's rubbed in roasted garlic with some whole grain mustard, olive oil. We've got a condiment here of sour cream, chives and horseradish. Enjoy. Very hearty, just what I need. How was the day? I'm going to feel it in the legs tomorrow, but what a great way to see Margaret River. It was great. I might even do a bit more bike riding now. It's really inspired me. Well, this show has certainly inspired me to jump back in the kitchen and do some more cooking. Hope it's done the same thing for you. Take it easy. See ya.